Jesu. Halleluja. Amen. Mbona mumeacha? <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Uh, I never slept yesterday night. I wrestled the whole night. And I was not wrestling with fire. I was wrestling with powers. Hallelujah. I think I, to be very precise, I looked at my watch and it was 5.13. That's when I closed my eyes and by 6 I was up. And, and, and I remember at around 3, I saw a vision of many people seated. And then I was invited to preach. And then there was a dark cloud. And it was so intense in my room that I literally felt there was a contention. So I woke up and I asked the Lord, what is this? And the Lord told me, the enemy is mad because he does not want the sons to prosper. And that is why anytime people talk about money in church, it becomes very offensive. But how many know even funny preachers, the reason they attract the giving they attract is because it works for some people. Hello? Even those who people who coerce men to give as if they are being forced, there are people you can't tell never to give because they have seen results. Hallelujah. So a man can have a scandal seriously, but people will still give. Because they have seen results. And you can never argue with a man that has results. And so I just want to pray that there will be no heaviness. I, I, I read somewhere and it broke my heart. And I'm believing God before the end of this service, I'll talk as a father today. That there are 14 million people under CRB. They are blacklisted. Because they took a facility, but they couldn't pay it. This is not America, this is Kenya. The current statistics show 75.1% of Kenyans are below the age of 35. And 69% have what we call, they live in the rural area. And if 75 are below, I want to believe it was not your grandmother or your grandfather. That is under CRB. It is us. 14 million. Out of around 28 million. And you see you cannot be in CRB. If you are not 18 years and above. So we eliminate 16 million teenagers. So the people that are there are here. So matters finances. Must be understood from scripture. Because it looks like men. Have tried to survive on their own way. And it is not working. There are two things we have to teach well from Bible. One, finances. The second one, sexual purity. About sexual purity, we meet on 14th. And it is not just for the single. Because I discovered, lust does not respect marriage. The reason why we have many married people with mpango wakando is because it's not the absence of sex. In marriage, it is something called lust. Hallelujah. So we must address the matter from scripture. And we live in a time where lust is now atmospherical. The word atmosphere means it is like the way you are breathing in oxygen. You need to conquer the flesh. Because all the dispensers of lust are doing a good job. So we must build capacity. And these are some of the end time tools to draw men away from the presence of the Father. I was being told yesterday night at 7.30 some two men were caught having sex. Men, not a man and a woman. Men. Uh, just next to the church down there. Men. We are not in America. This is Kenya. We must address matters. And if you read your statistics, the number of gazing is rising in Kenya. It is one of the things that we don't talk about. Now, if I be a pastor of our time, we'll address this matter. Hallelujah. 
So lift up your hands, say, Jesus, today, let my ears and the ears of my understanding be open. I receive wisdom from above concerning finances. Today, oh God, let this matter settle in my spirit in Jesus' name. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. So I'm going to be very fast because I have a lot to say. So we did not finish on what we were checking last time. Just a quick recap. And what I saw is that the kingdom is governed by five things. The kingdom is governed by five things. The kingdom is governed by five things. Laws, altars, covenants, sacrifices, principles, and relationships. I mean six things. These are the six things that govern the kingdom. There could be more, but these six things connect. Uh, they govern the kingdom and they govern the economy of a kingdom. And we began by looking at the laws that govern finances. And we saw the law of reciprocation. The law of reciprocation. The kingdom is about a reciprocation. When you meet a kingdom demand, the kingdom is mandated to meet your human demand. The second one we saw is the law of giving and receiving. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Today morning, Pastor William mentioned something powerful. He talked about the obesity of the sons. And he said when you have sons who all they do is receive, then ideally they will be obese because they don't give. And some of us, we sit in a place whereby we just receive. And the law of giving and receiving is a very serious law because I discovered that if Pastor Kevin is believing God for a phone and I'm believing God for resources and the resources are with Elder Kanyinge, it means as long as, as I'm holding to this phone, then I have no place to receive. In this law, just come, in this law, this is how it operates. Because whatever we need is always with men. Are we together? So there is something he needs that I have, and there is something I need that he has. But the law operates by me releasing so that I can receive. Are we together? So let's assume there is something I'm believing God for. And remember, in this law of giving and receiving, I might give a phone and receive a job. It's not a pyramid scheme that you give a phone and get ten phones. You might give a phone and get a wife. How much is a wife? I remember I gave out my car and I got a wife. Who came with her car? So, hallelujah. So, this is not a pyramid scheme. Amen. So that you give a wife and get others. No, no, that's not the system. So, it is the law of I have to give. Are we together? So that now, my hands have capacity to receive. Some of you, your hands are too occupied. So, even when heavens want to release the heaven are asking, why haven't you given? And out of this, thank you, I got a principle which I apply in life. Every time the Lord raises me to another level, because this life is about glory to glory, I don't sell my stuff. I always look for a brother that is entering that glory or I become an usher to that glory. So, if the Lord blesses me, with households, I get new seats. I will not begin to go to gg.com and put the seats there for sale. What I do, I will look for a person who is beginning in life and may be in need of the seats because I know this law. Some of us are too business oriented and that's why this law does not apply. Then we saw the law of realms. Realms, whereby we said money is not in heaven, but money is on earth. 
and we justified by showing that even Jesus being God needed men to finance his ministry. Jesus being God, the owner of all, needed people to finance with substance. Law number four is the law of saving, kingdom saving. I call it the law of kingdom saving because men save also in the bank. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. And these are the teachings of Jesus. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. The law of kingdom saving. The way people take money to the bank for savings, we also save. There is a saving archive. The Bible says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? What does the Bible say? There is no safety of your treasure on earth. And I want to tell you, this is the hardest thing to do. You must believe that the saving scheme of heaven is safer than the saving scheme of earth. So where, where does Jesus say we need to put our treasures? But, everybody read, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Is it in your Bible? So, there is another saving system. It is called kingdom saving. Kingdom saving. Let's look at 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will, will also be. Your heart will be also. So, Jesus, by the way, if you read your Bible, these are the words of Jesus. This is not Paul under the inspiration of the Spirit. This is Jesus talking to the disciples. So he's saying there is another saving scheme whereby you store your treasure. What is a treasure? It's something that you value. And if you understand the language of saving, it is a language of interest. Wherever you put your savings, there is always interest. And then it looks like you, your heart is what controls where you save. Your heart is what controls where you save. We are seeing a lot of shaking economically. COVID-19, for the first time we heard in Kenya, that our economy is almost entering into a recession because of the stagnation of the economy. It is not the first time in America they had the, what they call the recession. Whereby economies were collapsing. And let me even tell you the truth. One of the things that is coming out in terms of business with the whole COVID-19. And I shared this and I'll share again. One of the underlying agendas with COVID-19, especially in Africa, will be universal health care. This conversation has been there for long. And what is universal health care? Is that you will find a dispensary after every five kilometer radius. Your NHIF is about to be very active and very productive. And men will enter into a system of becoming slaves of drugs. But then I'll take a whole month and teach you on divine health. Are we together? Before the year ends. Because your money will not be used for drugs. Are we together? So, and this one will happen, and I want to tell you it will happen soon. There will be so many dispensaries and so many hospitals. Drugs are going to be very available. And so because of this, you are going to create a dependency on drugs. And these are some of the objectives that are being pushed. Right now, if you don't know, the concept of online business, which is highly pushed by the likes of Amazon, who is considered to be one, is, uh, in fact, is the richest guy now, globally. This will be the conversation. 
If your business is not online, if ministry will not invest on online, it might be extinct. These are some of the things that came with COVID. We are hearing conversations of Bitcoin, meaning that we are entering into a cashless system. Hallelujah. We are entering into a system. All you need is M-Pesa, credit card, and, and just a way of transaction. Now, these things don't have a guarantee. They can collapse. Blessed is the man whose money is not in Bitcoin. Blessed is the man who is not relying on the value of the dollar. Blessed is the man whose treasures are in the kingdom. Because even if the economy collapses, you will know that where your resources are, it has never collapsed. Hallelujah. This, and I'll tell you this for free. During this COVID period, the Lord was providing money for his kingdom. But then that was the time I knew I'm called. I said, now is the hour to know whether I called myself or I'm called. And many of my friend pastors, majority, bought cars during COVID. And I felt like telling them, God was not giving money for cars. He was giving money for his work. But because of your appetite, you never saw. Because where your heart is, hallelujah, that's where your treasures will, will go. And this is one of the systems that gives you capacity to survive even when the nation is under drought. It is called kingdom saving. Because the law of saving is here. Jesus said. Jesus talks about it. Blessed is the man whose treasures are in the kingdom. I won't lie to you, it's not easy. People feel nice. People feel nice when they have money in the bank. There is a good feeling. In fact, when a man or woman has money in the bank, even their prayers are different. The way they pray is different. When a man has nothing, oh Jesus, that's a desperate man. And so there, there is, they, they say money has some form of warmth. And some people will never know that God supplies until they begin to invest in the treasure room of heaven. If you want to open the door of supernatural supply, begin to invest in eternal matters. Is it easy? No, it is not easy. I have tried it. It is working. Hi. I'll give you one testimony. I was believing God for my school fees. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to use any church money. Me, I want to pay my school fees. And I was invited for a prayer meeting. In fact, uh, she's here, Rahab. Uh, Rahab, the one, yes, Rahab, that one. I saw you coming, amen. She, she, in their company, you can sit down. They invited me in their company for a prayer meeting, prayer. And I spoke for less than, um, less than 45 minutes. Come on in the scriptures, things are 45 minutes. And, and the couple came and they gave me an envelope and I shook the envelope and I felt it had weight. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and I tell you the truth, that envelope was half of my school fees. 45 minutes of speech. Why? Eh, all my money is in the kingdom. So there is another ATM. I don't carry it in the pocket. I just come and lay my needs and I know, Lord, there is something in my account. I am not asking for something I have not deposited. Naturally, go and try and put an ATM in an account you have never saved. I tell you, they, 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 it's as if the ATM knows you have no money. They, they will write in capital letters, sorry, <laughs> insufficient of funds, and produce a receipt just to confirm to you you have no business standing here. Hallelujah. There are times we stand in the ATM of heaven and the system says you have no capacity because there is no investment. Are we together? Are we together? Do you know my father, biological father, gave a piece of land to church and he told me they could not pay. So he said, instead, he sold that land. 
And last week, I began to pray in line with what he gave. If I can be connected to him and receive curses, I can also receive blessings. It doesn't mean that everything in our families is demonic. So because of the seed he sowed, I know that is an investment. I can. Now I'm the one who is going to withdraw. And that's how I know we will buy this property without struggle because my father <laughs> gave out a piece of land for church. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, how is your account in heaven? If today you are to survive by what you have saved, will, how many days will you live? Hallelujah. I just talked to them, asked them, if today you are to survive by your saving, how much? How much? You know, an old woman gave me a story and I'll never forget it. She told me, when it comes to church building, I, I, I cannot shy away. And I asked her why. She told me one day the pastor said that if, if God was to come and ask you to pick the resources or the stones you have given for his house and build your house, how big will be your house? Selah. Let, let's assume today you want to build a house. Amen. And the Lord tells you, all the giving you have ever given me, I am returning it. Now go and build a house. How far will that house go? Ah. And I said, Lord, I need to be committed. Let's look at First Chronicles 29, 10 to 20. This was the attitude of David. This was the attitude of David. First Chronicles 29, 10 to 20. I want to bring to your attention, this is a writing that David writes after giving an offering of one billion. In one day, one billion. Because, uh, you know, through theology, we are able to look at the value then and look at our value now and see how much the man gave. And guess why he gave? For the building of the temple, because David was not permitted to build the temple, but the money that Solomon received was enough for the building. So Solomon, all he needed to do was to build. And that is why in the time of Solomon, he prospered. Because David fought all the battle, gathered all the resources, and the work of Solomon was to build his house and the house of God. And that's why the man, the man had a lot of time to marry all the women he married. Because there were no wars to fight. The father had fought all the wars. The father had provided for the building. And so the only work of the child was to prosper. You know, someone asked me, Pasi, how did Solomon manage to get 700 wives? Concubines. In those days, you get, this is just a by the way revelation. Amen. In those days, when, you remember when Esther was supposed to go uh, for an audition? In the house of the king. And models were prepared. You know most of us read that scripture carelessly. And I remember my village pastor. Made me believe it was a fashion show. That model number one will come. And talk here. And then pose. And then pose. And then the king will say. Mm -mm. And then model number two will talk here. And then pose. And then when Esther came. The king said that one. That one. That was not the case. There was something called the harem. There were two of them. The first harem was where they prepared the virgins to meet the king. The second harem is where not virgins. Because you never met the king on a public place. You met the king in his bedroom. Hey. So, that's why the matter was urgent. Because if Esther would not have won, it meant she would have ended up in the next harem. And no one would marry her. So she would remain as a concubine of the king. So it doesn't mean that Solomon had a relationship with the 700. It tells you maybe one came to his bed and he was not even pleased and they went to the other harem where they were put as concubines permanently. So the man had 700 concubines and 300 wives. But we see it's the problem of success. That's why good parenting tells you, don't eliminate troubles that made you who you are. 
I've had parents say, my children will not face what I faced, but you are who you are because of what you faced. So what you are saying, your children should not be like you. Are we together? Wacha kakae bila food skumbili. Kajue watu ukosa. Nasiati ya kuna pesa. Hallelujah. Kapeleke boarding. Kaoge na majibaridi. Kajue hot shower ni privilege. Siku kuja hapa endman kananza kwambia mama kuna blue band na peanut butter. Huh. Okay, that's for parents for another day. So it's good for them to go through the process and appreciate. So let's read. Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly and David said, Blessed are you Lord, God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Let's go to 11. You as O Lord is the greatness. Let's read. The power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as the head of our. Tell your neighbor that is the prayer of a man that gave a billion. Let's continue reading. Let's go to 12. Both riches and honor come from. Let's all read. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Uh -huh. Now therefore our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. 14. But who, oh Jesus, everybody read. Oh, okay, let's assume you gave a billion, one billion, and you are now in church, and pastor did not recognize you, and you are seated at the corner. What prayer would you make? Father, were it not for me, this church, <laughs> these are the places you make demands, and tell pastors you do your poster, make sure you acknowledge me as one of the financiers of that ministry. A man, this is the attitude, we are Go, go to 14. Go to 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? David is ashamed that he's saying, Lord, who am I to offer? Why? Because I can't give you. What am I giving you? All that I have and all that I am is because of you. So what can I give you really? For all things come from you and of your own we have. Now tell your neighbor, this is the language of a custodian. It is when you know all that you have, you have been entrusted. Hallelujah. It is not ownership, it is custody. But you see, because of where we live today, most of the people, their wealth is not genuine. They got it through a sponsor. They bribed their way to the top. So they can't make this prayer. Because all that they have is by their own effort. They can only do a t-shirt like one of the secular artists did. Imeandikuwa bidi yangu. Na kwa hiyo bidi, hiyo oxygen anapumua ni ya mungu. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Uh, 15. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are a shadow and without now, this understanding has to settle. I can say many things about these things. But David comes to a recognition that man will not be on earth forever. And the greatest legacy man can leave is not what he leaves for his children. is what he leaves in his children. The greatest inheritance is not what you live for. is what you live in. And you see, there are two men who we are given their speech in Barrio. In their last days, we captured their speech. One of them is Solomon and the other one is Paul. Let's look at how Solomon exits the scene. That is Ecclesiastics 1 from verse 1 to 3. Let me tell you, the richest man right now, Amazon, I think this is the time he's hitting the one trillion dollar. 
the richest man. Solomon worth, according to current rating, is two trillion dollars. Now, the man had honor, riches, connections, mention all these things. But before the man died, this is how he began writing his last book. The word of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Look at two. Uh, everybody read. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Now, this is a two trillion worth rich man as he's exiting the scene about to die. They say the book of Ecclesiastics was written when Solomon was drunk, frustrated, and almost depressed. Though he had all the money, he realized there is nothing he did for the kingdom. Hallelujah. One as if you were sana. So when David talks about that man is a passing shadow, he's trying to say, if man does not live with an eternal mindset, one day you might sit at 80 years and begin a chapter called Vanity of Vanities. Yes, you will have your five bedroom. You will have a four by four pack there. You will have land that you cannot till. You will look at all these things and say, what a waste. Let's look at another man. This man, when he was dying, he even had to ask his son Timothy to bring a jacket in jail. He had nothing. He survived on donations. And his name is Paul. Where he says, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And now I am ready to be poured as a living sacrifice. Are we together? According to men, Paul failed. If we were to rank Paul and Solomon in our day to day, Paul did not leave any mansion behind. Paul did not, uh, what, did not uh, what, what else? He didn't have a piece of land. The man abandoned all for the kingdom. Today we are reading the books of Paul. This being one of them. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept there. Now all these two people are on their exit mode. Because one day we will exit the scene. We are not here forever. Hallelujah. So one of them, two trillion dollars worth. That, but then that is dollars. So you do two trillion. You multiply by a hundred. It cannot fit in your calculator. That is money that can fund Kenyan budget for a while. For almost a year. So a billionaire, a trillionaire, not even a billionaire. At the verge of his life, he looks back and says vanity of vanities. A man who was not successful, according to what we call success, looks back. He has planted a church in Ephesus. He has planted a church in Corinth. He has planted a church in Philippi. My God. He has, he has ministered to the church in Rome. This guy, his work was to plant churches and raise men. And when he left the scene, he said, I have run the race. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now look at eight. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of? Where, where is that crown? Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his. Paul never lived for things of this time. He lived for a crown that is of that day. <coughs> Sorry. Are we together? Are we together? And any time man lives for the things of now, he will not put anything in his eternal treasure. And there will be nothing. The appetites of now are louder. But our desire should be for the crown that the Lord is going to give us. Hallelujah. I told my wife, if I'm to build a big house today, that house will benefit me, my daughter, the children of my daughter, watakuwa wanakuja shags, not to stay, to see. The children, my grand 
Yeah. Toshokoro, Bonasve. Those ones. The children of my children, they will be passing by. Na watakuwa nambiana. Uko ndio hukali kuanga naishi. Meaning that they don't benefit from anything. So that tells you, if I build a house, it can benefit a maximum of two generations. Two generations. You take a loan today, you're on mortgage, and you put a house, it can only serve two generations. If a man builds a house for God, it can serve thousands of generations. One day you'll be in heaven and you'll be seeing people in life church Lemuru and you say we were part of these things. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we shall live for eternal things. And our investment will be on eternal things. Hallelujah. Does God want you to suffer all your life? No. When you begin to live for eternal things, God will make your stay here comfortable. It is automatic. You will never lack anything good. Now let's go back to David as we begin to conclude. Let's go to 15, Second Chronicles. First, is it first or second? Are you learning something? Are you learning something? So receive the grace. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you. As were all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. 16. O oh Lord our God, all, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. 17. I know also my God that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness as for me in the uprightness of my heart I have willingly offered all these things and now with joy I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. Now there are a few words here that I want you to understand. The Lord is not concerned about your money. He's concerned about your righteousness. Fast. It doesn't matter how much you lay on the altar. The first thing that needs to come is your life. So he said that you test the hearts and have pleasure. Not in the money but in the uprightness. That is why... We cannot build the house of God with politicians' money whom we don't know where it came from. Where is the uprightness of heart? I know somebody always say, the wealth of the wicked belongs to us, but there is also wicked wealth. There is the wealth of the wicked and there is wicked wealth. So me, wicked wealth, apana. And any time we entertain these people, the blessing does not go to the saints. They, it doesn't go to them. No, it doesn't go to them. They will remain poor because someone understood something and he invested there. So we will be here praying in tongues, prophesying, very sharp in the spirit, but in poverty. Are all politicians bad? No, but majority of our Kenyan politicians, we know them. We know them. Yeah, we know them. So we cannot sanctify them on the pulpit. We just have to be truthful with the things of the Father. Otherwise we will build monuments without the glory of the Father. You have a beautiful house without God in it. And then as for me in uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. All givings should be willing. Are we together? Let no one force you. Let no one coerce you. And I'm a preacher. I've been in the game for a while. And I know a few things that you don't know. I tell you, there is a place we went and we were told, Pastor, Sadaka ya kwanza ni ya muhubiri, utajinulia sadaka. Now, can I tell you why some, some of these funny preachers do what they do? This is what we call now church politics. Some churches will invite you and pay your flight and your hotel one way and tell you, sir, you have to raise an offering for your way back. Now you are in Kenya with a one-way ticket and they give you members. And so what you do, you never came for ministry, you came for fundraising. So day one, everyone is given an envelope. And you are told after these seven days, you need to decide in your heart. 
how you will bless the man of God. Is it bad to bless the man of God? No. But after the seven days of ministry and revival meeting, you discover there is something we call happy ending. The kind of gimmicks that will be performed. You know, I went to a place and they were doing feet anointing. But you needed to come with a seed for you to be anointed. It's just a creative way of raising money. And I tell you, they raised money. Because Kenyans, when you are genuine, they don't give. But when you introduce Sarakasi, my God, they give so you have money. They come at you, you want some form of entertainment and drama. Hallelujah. But we will not do those things. It will be willing. Whether you give 10 bob or 100,000, it must be willing. And with joy. And also I've seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. Go to 18. When the Bible says be a cheerful giver, it doesn't mean you give smiling. You can smile, but deep down you are wounded. I work in the media. Sometimes you are smiling. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Angaza Show. This, but deep down, I'm very mad. So I always hear people say, when you give to God, you're a cheerful giver. <laughs> but deep down, <coughs> you're saying who? Oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, our fathers kept this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart toward you. So that it was a desire covenantly to build God a house. 19 as we finish. Everybody read. And give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandment and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. I declare over your life from today you will begin to invest in eternal matters in the name of Jesus. Your account in eternity will not be empty because your heart is for the crown like Paul. You will begin to invest there. The final one, the final law is called the law. This is the law of kingdom saving and then there is the law of investment. The law of investment. This one we find it in Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The law of investment. About three men that were given different talents according to their ability. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. So Jesus or a king selects three men. One he gave one talent. The other one three talents. And the other one five talents. And these talents are not talents like playing soccer. They are treasures. The Greek word and the rendering there is that he gave treasures to men. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. So he gave them each, the Bible says, each according to his ability. Are we together? But now, there was no manual either class for them to learn how to multiply. Huh. A man traveling to a far country, whom called his own servant and delivered his good to them. Go to the next one, 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another, uh, uh, to another one, to each, everybody read, to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Now, you read this parable, it is connected with rapture. There are around parables here in Matthew 25 that are connected with the second coming. And one of them is this one. That they were given treasures and they were supposed to invest. But there is no manual on how to invest. But they were given according to their ability. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Everything from heaven is according to your ability. And ability is capacity. Are you understanding me? So, God can never entrust you beyond your capacity. God can never entrust you beyond your capacity. The second thing is that God expects multiplication to what he gives. I'll give this with a church example. The reason why some of us have one day I took time to listen to a general and a pastor who has a church of 10,000 members in Kenya. Apostle William. Kemani from Nakuru. And 
I was very concerned. I took a whole day to listen to the man. Because I wanted to know what is the secret of this man. And I sat down there with my notebook and my Bible, morning devotion. They prayed prayers we pray. I was surprised. The, the way we pray is how they prayed. Are we together? I sat down lunch hour. Very simple teachings. I thought I would hear mysteries and Greek and Hebrew. I sat for the evening service. Even as they were sharing, I discovered I had more points. Bonas if you were. Kushai hubiriwa ka scripture kenyo mesoma lafu. Unaskia kuna ka point pasta akupeana. Ju unaskia kuna. Kuna haka niliona. Bonas if So I was there now saying, the things they have taught, I feel I could even have given more. And then I discovered the reason why the man has 10,000 and the Lord has blessed us with the people we have is because of capacity. Hallelujah. It is not difference in Bible, neither in prayer, it is capacity. And then in that capacity, there is grace to invest. Now, the wisdom of investment was not given by God. It is where you come to a place of God gave you a functional head. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God will anoint you, but he will never think for you. Are we together? There are levels of success that are not connected to prayer. They are connected to structure and system. I, I was just studying and trying to understand why is Safaricom the biggest corporation in Kenya? Safaricom. It is the biggest corporate in Kenya. And I discovered it's not that they have the best employees. They have the best systems of management. Hallelujah. And that is why the reason why we don't have results in Kenya is not absence of leaders is absence of systems. And those who created the system, they created the system with them in mind. Can I even surprise you? Yes? Now, and this is not politics. This is a preacher speaking as a Kenyan. The so-called dynasties benefited from the system. So if we don't change the system, if the hustlers go, after 10 years, they will be dynasties. Okay. Me, I'm not a hustler or a dynasty. Me, I'm a child of God. I am a child of God because that's who I am. Hallelujah. Why? Because the system is so open for looting. It's so open. You enter there, you will make wealth you cannot account for. In a few, in a few years, You'll be a billionaire in this nation. Why? We have a system problem. Now, the law of investment is always connected to systems. Hallelujah. We are all hearing the same gospel. A, a, a study was done and they said, if today all the money in the world will be collected, all the money, to say, kill him to person who can to work in the bank. Na iweko yote. Alafu tuambiwe kila mtu wapange laini. Iyo pesa ikuwe divided according to every Kenyan. Let's assume ya Kenya mzima. 47 million Kenyans. Kila mtu labda apatiwe 200,000. After 10 years, high chances, the poor will still be poor. The rich will still be rich. Why? There is something here. It is a fact. Can we talk? Some of you, the issue is not absence of resources. is direction of investment. How do you buy a phone worth 90000 and you're living in a house, you're paying 5000 My friend, you have capital in your hand. As men are praying and you're lifting your phone and saying, Father, bless me. The Lord is saying, it is there. 90000 this one. In a plastic form. It is there. Which other blessing do you want? I have given you a functional head. And I have given you a seed. Now the concept of investment. And multiplication. Is not in me. Think. And this is what I discovered. 
Today I'm talking as a pastor and as a father. The difference between a failure and a successful man is attitude, not resources. Attitude. I'll give a good example. Has it rained? It's rained right now. Now, there are two people. When it rains, one of them will look for an umbrella. Naendele na kazi. Kuna mwingine, atatafuta duve. Naseme, aki nilikuwa na dakwa na job, lakini maziaki kumenyesha. Ah, wacha tu niende kesho. Naende Netflix kuona movie. And you know the Bible says, a little slumber and poverty, not the devil, poverty comes knocking. And now, you have been sleeping all along. Poverty has come and you have found a preacher shouting at the top of his voice, teaching about the spirit of rejection, curses in your family, and the spirit of poverty in your family. And you say, that is me, pastor. But when we audit your life, they are not there. Ulipenda usingizi kuliko kazi. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, these things don't need prayer. Step out and do something. Hallelujah. It is attitude. It's an attitude issue. And one of the problems my friend one day taught, and he taught about the deception of prayer. I said, what do you mean? Prayer can be deceived. He said, yes. He said, have you ever realized when you are discouraged? You come and pray for one hour. You feel encouraged. But how many know you don't pay rent with the feeling of encouragement? You come and pray for one hour and feel encouraged. Your house will still be closed. Because we don't settle matters with feelings. You need to pray to generate capacity to engage. Most of the believers are poor. Not because there is a curse, because they are lazy. And I want to believe majority of them ndio wako kwa loto sio ndoto. Nimeangalia TV. Utafanya nini na hii pesa? Kwanza ya kwanza napenda kushukuru Mungu, nitatoa fungu la kumi, alafu ya ingine, nitaeka ka plot. Fungu mimi uwezi niletea pa pesa ya loto. It means you never trusted God to be your supplier. You went to betting. And why were you betting? You have appetite for money. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> A friend of mine, a musician, was dealing with a lady and, and her house had been locked up. And, and the guy is a, is a big artist. And he felt, he was in prayer, he felt this house is locked up, but it's not the will of God. So, the guy decided to call the young girl and said, let's just do the math. Let's look at all the money you have received this month. So they calculated. Da, 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 da. And they said, what were you believing God for this month? She had just moved out. She was believing God for a bed and some things to cook. They calculated the money. And then, Akamwambia, give me your phone. Then, Akakuta Akona apps the betting. Akamuliza, how much have you put in betting? And do you know what they discovered? The money the lady had handled was enough to pay her rent and buy the things she was believing God for. But 70% of that money was in the betting app. And no bet came sure. Now, is God providing? But we look like we cannot trust in God enough. So we want to multiply his money through means that are not holy. And someone gave a good example of what betting is. It's a, it's a story that summarizes betting. That a man went to a village and he was buying monkeys. Have you ever read that story? Yes? He went and he began to buy monkeys. One at 500. And people brought the monkeys. Then he went and began to... The, 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 the demand increased. He began to buy the monkeys at 1,000. Then later he said, if you get a monkey, uh, you sell to me at 10,000. And then there were no monkeys. So what he did... All the monkeys he had gathered, he began to sell them at 10,000. So the villagers, all of them, bought the monkeys at 10,000, which he bought at 500. Okay. Mimi si jaita mutu nugu, bwana zime. 
But when they say this is a monkey business, is a monkey business. I tell you, it's one of the biggest. And I'll tell you, anytime we are near elections, betting companies are always on the rise. Why? That's how you finance elections. Majority of these betting companies are owned by politicians. So they loot county, they loot budget, and then they loot the little you have. And then they have the power. They use a Christian principle. It is called the power of testimony. Whatever you see on TV is ushuhuda. Mimi ni nekelea 50 ehe. Bada ya kwekelea 50. Kukaka ni kapigiwa simu. Na leo ni meshina 1 million. The same way. If I want to grow the church. I just need 5 testimonies every Sunday. Pastor Sunday wakati uluko naombea finances. Wakati uo nikashika neno. And I received. Vilo litufundisha kupokea. Nikanza kuonena na ndimi. Last week. Mungu wakafungua njia. Nimepata elfu wa msini wiki. Mungu ni muaminifu. I tell you the truth. Nikiongea hivi kuna mdo atakuwa nangoja kupokea neno. I receive na iweke. Kwa sababu kuna mdo alipokea na akapata results. So they use the media for testimony. And testimonies are powerful. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. The law of investment. Here you use your head. Hallelujah. I will be answerable in heaven. The Lord will tell me, son, I gave you these talents. What did you do with them? And if I don't multiply them, and I failed, I'll miss heaven. So when I look at this church, this is not all that God can do. This is our beginning. So I cannot settle and fill up as Jesus at Kosawa. My friend, every day I have to dream. Are we together? Are we together? Ah. <sighs> Let me share in 10 minutes about, we talked about the, those that govern the kingdom are laws, altars, covenants, sacrifices, principles, and relationship. There is a level of giving that is called covenantal. It's a covenantal giving. And this level is an agreement between you and God. Like right now, I'm in a covenant of 10 years. That all the money I get in my life is a seed to God and to his work. It's a covenant. And this level is tricky. Because if you fail to fulfill it, you open a door for attack. And I'm going to give scriptures because they used to call it the vows. The giving of the vows. Psalms 66, 13 to 14. This is covenantal giving or vows. Psalms 66, 13 to 14. I will go into your house with burnt offering. I will pay you my. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. When you make a vow to God. You pay. Hallelujah. And that's why we tell men. Never make a vow or a pledge. According to. Your faith. Make it according to your grace. Can I be real with you? Don't pick a pledge card. And commit an amount. You will never pay. Because that pledge is a vow. And many have opened doors of unfulfilled vows. And their monies are attacked. One day we were praying and a woman of God said, she's a prophet. She said, the Lord is saying that my sons must honor my vows for me to bless them. I said, what do you mean? She said, many people, they pledge here, they pledge here, they pledge here, and they don't honor the vows. Well, and this is, but then this is the wisdom. I, I know possibly as your pastor, I shouldn't be saying this, but this is what you do. Anytime there is a commitment to give in church, take the pledge card or the envelope, go and pray, hear God, then commit. Nikita, up praise and worship. Hi, you can pledge something you'll never give. That's why I'm always sensitive. Wangapona si mama na elfu mia moja. Elfu mia moja, elfu mia moja. Wangapona si mama na one million. Lazma wingia kwa rada ya one million, one million. And then mtutu wana inuwa na sema, yo rada simbaya. Sema mimi pasta. Una imagine tukipitana hivi na kuangalianga naona unfulfilled vow. 
Jo ile kitabu ya pledge ni mimi niko na Okay. Sisemi ni mimi but most of the churches major fundraisers kitabu inakuanga na pastor. So ana akikuona hivi elder kanyingi anaonanga deni ya 100,000 au kulipa. Na hata vile anakuongelesha mambo yako ni kumalizia because you know wewe you are not even faithful. And many have made vows hurriedly without thinking. If you are married, don't make a vow without your wife. Go and sit with your husband and wife and agree. And say, as a couple, we have agreed to give this amount. Uskuja hapa na title deed. Wasema hii kiwanja hata ni mimi nilinunua. No, the day you got married, where were Ulisha? Now you are a team. So the question will be, has your wife agreed? Remember Elder Kanyenge came, he was giving us a deal and he said, me and my wife, I said, now I can listen. Because if it's you alone, there's a problem. I, I, I know, I don't look like I'm preaching good, but I'm helping some people. So that if you have a husband who's not born again, and he does not believe in this giving thing, he will not be offended. And you make a vow at that level according to what you are believing God to give you. Not the treasury of the family. And your husband is not a devil. Or your wife. Because there is no need of bringing something here that has conflict. So this is where the head must sit with the other party party and agree. Otherwise, many have failed to honor their vows. And the other problem with these vows, there are people, pastors, we have refused to release you. We still hold you in our hearts. Because you never honored your vow. Hmm. Let's go to the next one. Which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in do you know in trouble times is when you promise God? A research was done and they said many people are faithful with tithe when they have little. The day they, are, they get a salary increase, they don't tithe. Mtu wakilipua so, anakujanga na 10 bob church. Wacha anze kulipua 100,000. Yo unasikia hii pesa yote bana. Hai. Wacha ni kwenye kisaidia the poor. It is a fact. And I tell you, money has a voice. Sometimes I see the kind of tithe people send and I'm like, this one is mature. Because you know, going to an ATM and you put an ATM, na inaesabu moja, 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 20, na unatoa, na unaeka kwa basha, na unatembea more than 50 kilometers, na unakaa nayo for two hours, na unangoja, walo anatoa tithe, unasimama, ni kama unachomeka, na unatoa, na unaenda ukismile. It's maturity. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor you are mature. Because you have been faithful. Hallelujah. Because when you begin to make money, that is when entitlement of ini yangu, ini jasho yangu. And because even in this Kenya, making a lot of money means a lot of work. Umeenda place from six. Umekuo kilala wiki mzima, eleven. Baka umekuja church, watu waki worship umekachi ni ulale. Ujakuo kilala vizuri. Na Erika na kusumbua hapa na sema, wewe si mama bana, uko zile za ndugu na jua vile hii wiki mekua. Hapa tu naweza pumzika. Because I've not rested. Eric buwana zwe sana. <laughs> and then, that money you have earned with a lot of sweat and turmoil, you come and give it. And what offends men, because I know there are people who stop tithing, is when they give their hard-earned money and they feel like it's being abused. You can't take away the feeling because money carries your spirit. And you can't separate that feeling. Hallelujah. And that's why some people retreated. I saw a church whereby they give an account every month, every year, audited account. And people always say, Heri huku, huku tutakuwa tunatoa. Huku tunapeangwa audit. And I felt like telling them, you know even that audit, you're not sure that it's true. But because they sense there is a form of accountability, they feel at least this is this is better. So, let's look at these vows. Give me Leviticus 23.38. Leviticus 23.38. This one I want to read all the scriptures. 
so that next time you become very sensitive in vowing. Are we together? Beside the Sabbath of the Lord, beside your gift, beside all your vows, and besides all your free will offering which you give to them. Are you seeing the vows there? Let's look at Deuteronomy 12, 6. Deuteronomy 12, 6. Deuteronomy 12, 6. Deuteronomy. Everybody read. Your burnt offering, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offering of your hand, your vowed offering. Are you seeing the word vowed? Now look at all these offerings. Your free will offering and the firstborn of your herd and flock. <laughs> hey. These are serious. Just go to 12.11. Let's look at 12.11. Then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you. Your burnt offering, your sacrifice, your tithes, the heave offering of your hand and all your choice offering which you vow to the, to the Lord. So from today, I, want, I will make a prayer today and release you from every vow you ever made. I know you're a victim. Some of you were cornered, you were coerced, you were manipulated. So it was not even free will, but you entered into a vow. Let's look at the last one. Job twenty-two twenty-seven. Job twenty-two twenty-seven. You can also check at home Psalms 22, 25, Psalms 22, 25, and Psalms 50, 14. Psalms 50, 14. You will make your prayer to him. He will hear you. And you will pay your, your vows. So vows ought to be paid. I'm saying this and I'm emphasizing on this now so that anyone that makes a pledge for the land you will not make a pledge and run because that's a vow. Hallelujah. Now lift up your hand. Let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the days of ignorance, oh God, you overlooked. Today I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice where they entered into vows unknowingly and these vows have costed them. We terminate those vows now in the name of Jesus. And I declare, may they begin to move forward. Where doors were open to attack their finances. Now, under these utterance, I release them. I stand as an authority and I release them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. That is the first way of breaking free from a vow. The second way is looking for an amount. Not necessarily the whole. Just an amount. And you go and place it. And say Lord I made a vow. And I want to break from this vow. Bonus if, you, if it was to a man of God directly. You look for the man of God and tell him. Things have not been okay. I made this vow. And I want you to release me. Are we together? And I tell you some of you. This simple thing will sort your finances. It is a kingdom system. The final one uh, that I want to talk about is sacrifices. 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 This one is, I will touch on it, but I think I need a whole day to deal with it because we live in a time of Pastor Nataka Kuinua Madhabahu. And I and I tell you, I've seen people force money in my hands. But I always want to understand. What do you understand by sacrifice? What do you mean? Because maybe it is a definition problem. But a very basic definition of a sacrifice is a giving that will affect your economy. That's a sacrifice. A giving that will affect your economy. What does that mean? You, when you give that giving, things will be shaken economically. And most of the sacrifices must be instructed. They must be instructed. God has to speak to you the way he spoke to Abraham. To raise a sacrifice. So, it is a giving that shakes your economy. 
This was the level where people gave their land. It was the level where people gave cars. Level where people went and emptied their accounts. And they gave. But majority were always instructed. So the blessing did not come because of what they placed on the altar. It came because their hearts obeyed. I want you to follow me carefully. The blessing never came because they... Now, one day the Lord asked me to give out my first car. I obeyed. Now, I got a wife. And my wife came with her car. Now, the blessing did not come because of the car. It came because there was nothing in me that I was holding against God. I was saying, Lord, even if you ask of anything, I am willing to, because I know you have the best of plans in my life. You are not doing this to punish me. And when my wife came, before she even came to my house, she said, I don't use this car, so it can be used for missions. And I began to drive the car. And one day as I was driving, the Holy Ghost asked me, what were you looking for? A car or a driving, or, or a, what is it called? Logbook, ownership. I said a car. And he told me, I want to teach you a principle called the principle of access. Because many of us have missed opportunities because of the mentality of ownership. Hallelujah. Unajua kuna ikitu, ikitu ni yangu. Na kuna mentality, I need a piece of land for farming. Now, there is an old uncle of yours who has five acres and he's not using. So if you can access the land, it is more profitable because you may take 50 years to buy five acres. Can we talk? Do you know some of us, we have so much at our disposal, but mentality or ownership is meant to affect. Atilas muski angei ni yangu. Na nani vile tulianza na tukiwa watoto. Mama akinunua kitu anasema, you know where is the two brothers and so sibling rivalry. So we used to fight and my mom will say, Tony, kuja, my brother is called Joram. Joram, kuja. He ni yako, na he ni yako. Na mutu wa sivaya muingine na nisisikia kitu wapa. And so we grew with the mentality of, he ni ya, he ni yangu. And, 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 and let me help you. One day I went and my father told me, I have this piece of land and I'm old. I will not farm. So you guys are young. You can farm in this land. Now, all of us are looking for jobs so that we can get money and buy property. Now, in my case, I don't need to buy another land. My father labored and he has a piece of land. So let me farm there first. And then, as I grow, I will outgrow. And then I can buy something. We must change our thinking. A, a report was written by Dr. Bitamendemo. He's an economist. And he said in Kenya, we have more than 250 billion billion invested in the name of Tunyumba Twagishagi. Let's talk. 250 Billion. So you live in the city, you have a job, then you build in shags and invest 300,000 in a house you sleep in December only two times and then come back. So there is 300,000 dead capital in shags. Munaingianga 23rd munatoa cobwebs. Alafu munaosha munakaapo. And we are still saying we are. Whereas 250 billion in Melala Mali. I to make it. Vila muna ni nyamazia. Mimi siya ti ni. Mumona ni me quote the source. Siyo mimi ni liandika. Bwana sifiwe. Ni mutu alifanya research. Akaona kabisa. Tumebarikiwa. Lakini we have to change how we think. Because that 300,000 is enough capital. To begin a very serious business. But it is dead. Because of cultural ego. Umeingia na Bukinya. Western. Ama Mzamaria Mwema. Western. Alavu uko na katu bedroom. 
Na hapa Nairobi. Oh Jesus. Okay. So we'll deal with the sacrifice. Let me give you these are just I'll go very quickly. Now this is me as a father. I'm giving you 12 biblical wisdoms on finances. We write these 12, we go home. Is it helpful? I don't want just a church of men speaking in tongues and feeling good. There must be results in your life. Time ya kufanya job tutafanya. Hallelujah. Time ya job tutafanya. Time ya maombi tutaomba. But there has to be a balance. The first wisdom, always remember, God is the source. God is the source. So all you need to do is trust and obey. God is the source. Proverbs 8, 20 to 21. Proverbs 8, 20 to 21. God is the source. That is the first biblical wisdom. All that you need, God is the source. All that you need. Proverbs. That I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. God is the source. Number two, giving is essential. Giving is essential. Number two, giving is essential. And in this giving, it means you put God first in all your things. Giving is essential. Proverbs 3.9. Proverbs 3.9. We have many scriptures we can read, but let's look at Proverbs 3.9. Giving is essential. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. Number three, live on a margin. Live on a margin. Live on a margin. This one, living on a margin, it means Allow room for things to happen. Ishi kwa kipimo. And there are, and there are, there, 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 there are four margins. There is a physical margin. Physical margin. Usi ishi runda. Na ukona rent ya karenji. Kubali, that's my physical margin. There is a spiritual margin. There is a spiritual margin. All of us are blessed and entrusted differently. There is a time margin. Time margin. There is a time margin. So make sure you live on a margin. And there are four of them. Physical margin, spiritual margin, time margin. There, there, there are things you have to set as goals. That by the time I'm this age, one, two, three has to happen. Hallelujah. I know the future belongs to the Lord. But that does not mean we should not be people who plan. And then there is a financial margin. Make sure you live according to your means. A financial margin. Number three, saving. Proverbs 21, 20. Savings. Proverbs 21, 20. Savings. Savings. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man Squanders it. Some version says squanders it all. <laughs> so, just generate a culture of putting a little aside. That is what preserved Egypt. Number four, avoid debts. Avoid debts. Proverbs 22.7 Proverbs 22.7 Avoid that. When you enter into debt, you lose a portion of your freedom. The rich rule over there, poor. And the borrower is servant to there. Kama uko na deni na bank ikuite, unaendanga mbio. These are wisdoms. Avoid debts. And how? One of the ways to avoid debt, separate between assets, liability, leisure, and necessities. Separate between assets, liability, leisure, and necessities. Separate between assets, 
An asset appreciates in value with time. A liability is something that you have to put your money every day. Leisure is something you can live without. It's just for fun. Necessity. I have a phone and I have a TV. And I can watch all the news on Facebook. So a TV is not very necessary now that I need money to do something. Is it making sense? They, they may look like very common, but apply them. You'll see a shift in your finances. Number five, contentment. Contentment. Kutosheka. Hebrews 13.5. Contentment. Hebrews 13.5 Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. So we need to be satisfied with that which we have but we don't need to settle where we are. We can improve what we have gradually and strategically. But you must come to a place of saying this is what I can afford and I'm satisfied. Majority of young people want to live beyond and they are not satisfied. I remember when I was in campus, kulikuwa na kauteli hapo kando. Walikuwa na uza maragwe, ugali, chai. It was a very good hotel because we used to see the chef. It was an open air hotel, bonus fuel. All big hotels, even when you go to Hilton, you see the chef there. So I think in Kwa Hilton Dogo, what we Kibandaski. But I tell you the truth, there was another hotel inside campus where they will sell burgers, chips, all these delicacies. So where we used to go with 30 bob, you have ugali pamoja na sosa, maragwe na sosa ya skuma, na chai poesha. And I tell you, ulikuwa unakula one meal, una survive the whole day. 30 bob. Apa pengine, with 50 bob, umekula kebab ka sungura. Now, we had to come to a place of saying, hapa ndio panatufa kwa sasa, na mungu wa kitu inua, hapa pia pata, pata tufa. So, some people where you live, rent should not be a prayer item. It should be a strategic item. Hallelujah. Everyone began from somewhere. And your walk with God is not sudden. It is progressive. Wealth is progressive in the kingdom. Let no one lie to you. Utalala on this side, wamuke on this side. No. Because God walks with you from glory to glory. Favor. Leoka job ka 15k. After 10 years, you are earning 250. But you began it. And at 15, you were faithful. You had your vision. You were focused. By the time you are earning to 50, now you have capacity to grow and expand. Some of us, we live from hand to mouth. It is not wisdom. And that's why people are entering into depression. You make a deposit. You rent ili kukalia. Hallelujah. Who said? Kuishi kwa ploti enyo watu wanaogea inje. Ni dhambi. Hata sisi tulianza kuwaga na kaguni. Ushe yoga na kwa guni. Unoge ivu nasikia ni kaka meosha mbaka dhambi. Mwana zifuwe. Hallelujah. Kazuri sana. We didn't begin from hot shower. No. We began from stove. Unazimia stove inje. Amen. I remember kuna time kastof kalizima kwa nyumba na nilikuwa na perform your time. And you know when you go to big concerts, kuna kuwanga na ile smoke machine. So nasikia next to stage, Mr. T, unatokea katikati ya moshi. So yo ziku stof ilizima. Nikitoka inje, nikana ingia show. Nikikohoa. Na kama unajua moshi ya maftatazi mchezo. Kana ingianga mago nasikia kako kwa lungs kameseto. Hallelujah. So bonus if you were. 
We didn't begin from gas. We began from somewhere. Kwa kisha kajiko hapo inje. Unapepetea. Unapikia hapo. Na, na, na see lack of vision. It's because you're saying, this is where I am now. But this is not where I will be forever. One day, iyo gas hata itakuwa issue. And it will not be something. And guess what? It is this daily walk with the Lord that makes you have faith in God more. That's why our young girls are looking for sponsors. It is because of contentment. And even some musicians do a song and say, Heri ni liya kwa Range Rover. Number six. Are you sure? God is the source. Giving is essential. Oh yeah, number seven by the way. And Merudia number three upper. Sorry, number seven. Keep record of a budget. Have a budget. Proverbs 23, 23. Keep a record of a budget. Even Jesus said, before you build a house, you count the cost. Make sure you have a budget. What will a budget help you with? It will help you to avoid impulse buying. By the truth and do not sell it also wisdom and instruction. Are you on? Okay. Let's look at 24.34. Proverbs 24.34. And I tell you, I bless the Lord. When you get married, you discover that women are very good with details. So you see how needs come. And you need like an armed man. Every time I go shopping with my wife, I get tired. She will compare prices. Kutoka hapa mbaka hapa. Anachukua hii tena naona hii. Hii kwa chini na two bob. You know, mi niko two bob. See, tuende, we are blessed. But she has a tight budget. So what I always do, na ikanga earphones, mimi na enjoy preaching. Akinembia simama hapo na simama. Anaangalia zote, May you get a good wife. Si mwenye nakupeleka raundi kwa viatu. Eh, mumenda kununua unga ya ugali mnalala njana viatu mpya. <laughs> Hallelujah. So make sure you have a budget and in that budget follow it to the letter. Make it and follow it. It will avoid it will make you avoid impulse buying. Kuna tu viatu Nairobi saa mbili usiku. Tunakanganika tunakuita hivi. Ladies bonus if you will. Umetoka tu shughuli yako, unapita hivi unakaangalia, tena unarudi, unakaangalia. Ukikafit kana fit kabisa. Ah. Afiki tu inakuambia tu wacha tu nijispoil. Unakuta kiatu iko mguu ni pesa ya gas. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this will help you. This will help you avoid a lot of impulse buying. And you need to have a weekly, a daily, a monthly, and a quarterly and a yearly budget. Make sure you know per day how much do I spend per week, per month, and per quarter. I think when I began to live alone, I discovered that five shillings is a lot of money. Omelette na Ugali. Five bob. Ilikuwa lunch. Five bob. Hey. Some of you, five bob si pesa. Ju nengianga kumepiku kitoka kulipiku. The day you live alone, you will be like the woman who lost a coin. You will sweep the whole house. <laughs> because you know what that money can do. Number eight, do not cosign. Don't cosign. I'll explain. Cosigning is someone is taking a loan and you are not very sure about their integrity and then you put your signature as a guarantor. There are people who have lost savings because of cosigning. Until you are sure what they want to do is workable and never feel guilty for saying no. Those who save in circles, you know what I'm talking about. Is that true? Mtu alikataa kulipa, wakambio now your savings and now go. 
And some of them we know them and we know they don't pay because ada kichukua hiyo loan alikuwa na pesa So don't be afraid not to cosign. Huh. Because it will put you in trouble. Number nine, Work hard. Work hard. Proverbs 14.23 Work hard. Working hard is a principle in the kingdom. Proverbs 14.23 We're about to finish. In all labor there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to... Are you seeing the causes of poverty? Proverbs 28, 19. This one I read all the Proverbs. So that today you live here. Knowing that there are things you need to do. Proverbs 28, 19. He who tills his land and will have plenty of bread. But he who follows frivolity will have poverty in a... Even the Bible says you can have enough poverty. Proverbs 19.15 Proverbs 19.15 Proverbs 19.15 Laziness cast one into a <laughs> uh -huh. Read it loudly uh -huh. So kuna levels and jazz itaji maombi Let's look at the final one. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Are you seeing poverty is more of laziness than curses? Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know why he's talking about winter? The weather is not favorable. So a lazy man will have all the excuse not to work. And during harvest, he will begin to borrow. And they begin to blame us. And say how we don't help them. Number 10, seek God counsel in all, especially when you're about to invest. Before dealing in any deal, seek God's guidance. Before buying anything, seek his will. When the deal is too good, think twice. And I'll tell you when the deal is too good, pray twice. So that you are sure. Many good deals have led to losses. And I'll tell you, deals that concern cars, land, and property, don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Kama ni yako, itawekwa. Kama si yako, nisa. Many have lost money. I know a man who bought land, 70 million in Ruaka. Juzi ndo alijua ni barabara. Because what wa barabara wakujua kasema mbaka hapa. So, and do you know how he bought the land? Wali muambia malisafi, teke teke. Hata kuna mtu amesimama hapa na tuwa pesa mingi ni vile tuliongea na wewe. Na ni hile tu heshi, mi hata sikujui lakini sijui mbona ni mekupe, ni heshi matu. Fanya hivi, saatisa ikifika, ikitu imeenda. Ushe jibada kwa situation kayo. Na simu zinakuja ma SMS, unasikia maze, yu, ni vile ni mekuamini, ikitu ni fresh. <laughs> Always think twice. Unapigiwa gari picha ya interior. Gari ilibakangi interior. If you ask men who know car, watakwambia gari ni engine. Si inti? Interior unaweza maintain. Na engine unashinanga garage. And then unakuja tunai anoint. Kila siku unaomba pastor battery. Ya kuja mstati. Bada ibada. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number 11. Live according to your means, not your dreams. Live according to your Means not your. Let me give you a scripture. Proverbs 13.11. Proverbs 13.11. Not your dreams. Live according to your means. I need to finish quickly. Live according to your means. Everybody read. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. But he who gathers by labor will. It's better a thousand that you make with your sweat 
than a thousand that you make through funny means. Where I used to work in my former place, uh, we had some few ways of balancing accounts. And I tell you, I left with some good money. And where I used to live in Kisumu, and uh, the, you see, when you steal money, you never invest it. What you have not sweated for, you don't invest. So I used to buy clothes, eat, you know, foolish things. I added weight. And it was not healthy. And then the person we used to live with, akahama usiku, akabeba nguo, zote. I did not make a prayer. How do you pray? And you know his nguo pia. Pale. Zilitoka. Mungu haizi sema, it is the season to recover all. So let's be diligent, amen? And just believe God for the process. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. Hallelujah. Number 12, trust in the Lord, not money. Let your trust be in the Lord, not money. Seeking money before God is the recipe for unhappy life. Seeking money before God is the recipe for unhappy life. There are people with money and they are not happy. You know that? And there are people, economically, they, we may not say they have money, but I tell you, they oversleep. And I'll share this. Number 13. Diligence makes you rich. And what is diligence? It is wisdom and righteousness. These are the recipes of wealth. Let's look at Proverbs 21.5. Diligence will make you rich. This is wisdom and righteousness. Proverbs 21.5 I say today I come to you as a pastor and as a father. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. But those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. So diligence, righteousness and wisdom will lead you to plenty. Proverbs 12.27 Proverbs 12, 27. Proverbs 12, 27. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man precious possession. Diligence is man precious possession. Um, Proverbs 10, 4. Proverbs 10, 4. Proverbs 10, 4. Everybody read. Amen. It is my prayer that these wisdoms will help you so that you can enter into financial freedom. Are they helpful? Are they helpful? Amen. We'll continue from there next Sunday. Uh, I'll tackle on the altars, sacrifices, and I'll also tackle on the different givings of principle, tithe, fast fruit, thanksgiving, what are they? So that by the time people give their money, they know what they are doing. Remember, it is not the money that benefits you. It is the revelation behind the giving. And my spiritual father always tell me, let me have someone on the keys. My spiritual father always tell me, church does not give a refund. Amen? Church does not do what? So it's very easy to lose your money in church. It's very easy. And many have lost money. But that cannot be your portion. Let's just, just stand up on your feet and make a prayer. It is the will of God that we prosper financially. Are we together? It is the will of God that we handle money. It is the will of God that all that we do prospers. But again, there is a kingdom way of how these things are supposed to be done. Those that are in the marketplace, begin to pray for capacity. And tell the Lord to give you the wisdom of the marketplace. 
Some of us today, we are going to receive grace. Let me explain this. Just hold on. Because I've sensed it in the spirit. Grace is a divine ability that comes upon a man. When a man is under grace, you are able to wake up even at four in the morning. Naturally, you didn't have that capacity to wake up at four. But when you enter grace, you receive the capacity to do exceedingly above. Are we together? Some of us, what we need today is not more money. It's grace to do more. And that will be my prayer. Anyone in the marketplace. Some of you are too young to stay where you are and think that is all that God can offer. If God never called you to be a preacher, go back to school and do your master's and PhD. Take advantage of age. Hallelujah. If you know that there is still time, build capacity. Pray for that grace. This is how you see a man leaving his work at five and they still have a bag and they go to class until nine. He cannot explain. You enter a season where grace has been released for growth of capacity. Have you ever realized there are things you, you do in a time and you have so much grace and after that time elapses, you can't do them anymore. You have energy to grow. This time you can spend sleepless night doing many things. That is how God grows men. God will give you grace to expand capacity and after capacity is expanded, now you are able to handle what comes by that capacity. Hallelujah. In one minute, just tell the Lord, increase my capacity and let your grace increase over my life. Oh my God, we can do excess. Yes, yes, yes. This is not all that it is in life. This is not all. We are not here to suffer poverty. It is not our portion. We cannot be part of the statistics that is under CRB. The Bible is full of wisdom about money and resources. Receive the capacity. Receive the capacity. It is the will of God that you will prosper. It is the will of the Father that you shall handle resources. There is an assignment ahead. It will not just be handled by prayer. Men that can handle resources are needed. I cannot hear you pray. Begin to pray for your life. Some of you, you need grace to go beyond that limit. There is something we call an elastic limit. You need to go beyond that limit. Stretch yourself. There is much you can achieve. There is more you can achieve. It is the Lord that blesses the work of our hands. La petere setoria. Imparado zataya. Le kati parosa. Let there be a release of grace. Grace over your life. Grace over your life. Grace over your life. Zakata bakata. For so long men have made the church to look like it's the place where men run when they are poor. This is where we run because we have solutions. Hallelujah. When I look at all of us, my God, naskia kuambia tu na sheng, si time ya kulala. Wachana na masiris. Wachana na masiris. In your time ya kuenda job. My first job ili kwa mjengo. Attitude is enough. Pesa ijai seme ili toka mjengo. Iki ingia kwa wallet imeingia. Aisa mangi litoka wapi. Chafua mikono. Some of us we went to school we became foolish. Land imelalapo. Endo ununue seed ya carrot 500. Danza kupanda. By the time 4 months in Aisha. Kuna kitu unaeza leta kwa soko. Ima mboya kukanga I'm waiting on God. God is waiting on you. All the things you need for this life are there. There are resources all over. Hallelujah. The, the, give me the other microphone. The World Bank report, 2018, it shows that the next millionaires will not be people who are employed. One, two. Bonus if you will. Let me tell you where the economy is moving. Farming. Farming. By 2030, farmers do what I say. We are uh, Jesus. To 
tunaingia system enye affordable housing kupata nyumba itakuwa rahisi by 2030 tutakuwa tume adopt system kama ya mortgage ile rent tunalipa unaongeza kama 20k na after 10 years inakuwa yako by 2030 itakuwa imeingia and look how many of us have like a small piece of land at home lift up your hand you have like a small piece at home see kako ada kani kanko yako lift up your hand well lift up your hand well bwana asifiwe sana tell that person mwenye munua mkono karibu na wewe umekalia pesa na hauhitaji maombi unafaa kwa mkaa asubuhi ulize hapa nini naweza fanya haleluya enda ununue ngurue ziweke hapo yeshagi kuna chakula mob na unaweza kuwa unafanya job tao na unarudi unaangalia nguruwe zako ziko aje we are in a third world country for god's sake pesa itakutafuta hapa lazima ku change na mimi sitakwambia uinue seed cancel cases no kama laana ziko na uliingia kwa Yesu hapo ndio zinafaa kuishia hii ingine ni kufikiria bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe some of you unaanza kuarudisha ucha umesafa tao sana huku unangangana rudi ocha nani alisema kila mtu atasaksidia tao si okay pole naongeshe lakini saa zingine ukijam unaongea anga ile lugha unajua utasiki utasikizwa bwana asifiwe all of us will not succeed in the city some of us our blessings are in the village millionaire wa gishagi na millionaire wa city wa kisimama hivi ni millionaire akunanga wa gishagi na wa city tell your neighbor neighbor degree ni poa diploma ni poa lakini ilikuwa ya kukufungua kichwa mwambie hakuna job hata hizi tunaambililiwa hakuna mnaona watu wana madegree wanafieka barabara na wa, u, uko na energy ya kufieka upaye dhao tano na umeacha eka mbili home ah na hiyo eka mbili inaweza kuletea 100,000 every man ni kuanza pole pole kwani 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 seedlings za sukuma ni how much amen na kwenye limuru kuna nyeshanga daily huku weather ni favorable hii mambo ya kujificha kwa maombi itaisha utakuwa na kujanga maombi thanksgiving father thank you because you have done it si mambo ya kukuja father any which in my family scatter every divine bow na 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 hizo maombi mnazipenda because uko na pali pa kujishikilia nimesota juu ya wachawi zi ni ufala haleluya bwana asifiwe sana just lift up your hands ema nimekataa ujinga lord open up my eyes haleluya Tell the Lord to open up your eyes. You are surrounded by resources all over. They are everything you need for this life. You are surrounded by them. It is not lack of money, it's lack of ideas. Just make that prayer, make that prayer. Tell the Lord, Lord, I refuse to be ordinary. Yes, I'm young, but I refuse to be ordinary. Yes, I am young. This is the time to begin projects. This is the time to lay down the things that I have in my life. Kaposa tela bakata. Eh shadia bara. You cannot die next to the well it is illegal to die of thirst next to the well receive the grace receive the grace let your eyes be open your solution is next to you let your eyes be open let your attitude be changed let your attitude be changed let men now begin to see opportunities kaposa dabakata zele parosi akataya hallelujah Whatever you shall decide to do may it prosper in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus March March we are going to do a dedication service of our tools of trade Utakuja na jembe hapa ama panga Useme pasi hizi ndio zangu hapa ndio maisha yangu iko and we are going to believe God that, that thing will lift you We are living in a strange time so we need divine supernatural ideas to survive. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. We need divine supernatural ideas. The Bible says and 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 Haggai cried and Ishmael cried and then the eyes of Haggai were opened and she saw water. My prayer is that 
Water was there, but her eyes needed to be opened. May your eyes be opened to locate what you need instead of crying. The second thing we are going to do uh, in every conference we are going to have in this church, we shall dedicate a day to talk about marketplace. Beginning from the Vault Fort Conference. I want to believe God will raise young rulers. Okifunga shule kuna tumboga ulipanda. Ima mwe kuambia ngamzae ni pepoke. Inafakuisha. Unafakuanga wendu na mwachia za macho. Ambia mzae vilo meni angalili yaka kashamba. Izi ni zako za ma. Mini kona poke wacha ni inge shule. Nandu nakutawa toto na choma shule. Pesa ni za kupewa. Aku, aku fanyia job. Bona sviwe. So we are going to have that session and bring men that can share their testimonies and discuss marketplace. By the grace of God, God connected me with a lady who works in the ministry and what she does is registration of companies. Some of you history of fanyanga job can do the last mention. Pasina fanyanga job ya supply. Okona company. Apana na juwami une gotuna wase tunajuana nao, tunapiga madil. So ni kumanisha your next level ukapewa deal na shule uambi upelekwe upeleke invoice awezi peleka invoice ya cyber ati naitango kwa njokoma investments muko na bank account a, a bank account usiandike kwa njokoma andika Anthony Mwangi but ni kwa njokoma ina 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 ina, ina supply a unajua bado bado hatujatuma ma accounts hatujaomoka alafu unanyimwa deal na kuja pasi maze kuna dini likuwa imeiva lakini ma warfare. Shaitania, no, see warfare. Put your house in order. Bona asifiwe. Takuwa unatoka kwa ka bed, ka room, ka moja. Umepiga tie ya mtumba. Na blazer ya navy blue. Na trouser ni faded blue. Lakini na kasuti. Wewe ndu unajua pali umetoka. Lakini umeka business card. Na umepolish kizungu. Na umenyolewa fiti me big was spirit poor una ingia place unasema good afternoon sir first of all receive my business card i wanted to know if you have someone who does 1 to 3 unatoka na deal wewe ndo unajua ulitoka karenji lakini attitude si ya karenji unajua hapa ndo tunapitia kwa life bona asifiwe some of these things they don't need prayer They don't need prayer. They need someone to put his house in. Some of you, you do what we call tokapronua. Muna ongeanga biyashara. I'm Jay Fanya biyashara. Hey, zile idea uko nazo. Unga kwa meomoka. Lucky. <laughs> Ni story. Put it on paper. Let's begin to believe God. And guess what? If you begin something today, 10 years later, it cannot be where it was when you began. Will it make losses? Yes. Is it the devil? No. Loss is the school fees. You pay for profits. Where you made the loss, you will not make that loss again. And I know there are people here, financial advisors, people who can give you insight on how to go. We are talking about money. Hallelujah. Because you must be a rich ruler in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, we'll discuss these matters. Tell that neighbor, everyone is a business person. The problem is who owns the business. Si pale umeandikwa kazi si ni kazi ya mtu. Si ni biashara ya mtu. So, si suwote tuko biashara. Chita ni ya nani. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your sons and daughters. Thank you that today I speak to them as a father. Because a father is concerned about the welfare of his sons. And I declare, dear Lord, that these wisdoms will settle in them. And we will see men and women arising economically anointed and moving the mountain of commerce. We will see kingdom billionaires and kingdom millionaires. People that can move economies and give solutions. And people that are going to finance the works of the kingdom. Lord, we refuse to serve you in a mediocre way. There will be men standing, oh God, with their testimony in their mouths. But rulers as Abraham, 
runners and founders of economies and the leaders in the marketplace. I declare right now, Lord, let our eyes be open. Some will run to the academic center. Others will end up, oh God, in the governance and, and arts and entertainment. Wherever they will land, my God, let grace be availed for exploits and supernatural results. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. It's time to give our offering. May I believe in you. Me by the other cow, if you don't believe in yourself, bank in my faith. Me, I know. Is that English? Me, I. I know. I know. We cannot gather here. Pray. Listen to the word. And remain the same. It is illegal. It is illegal. Are you ready with your offerings? Are you ready with your offerings? Are you ready? Tell your neighbor, neighbor. In the afternoon. Tunakuja kujiombea. Mwambia vizuri. Mwambia mimi usiniachie prayer item. Wewe kuja ujiombe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Imambo ya kusema tuko pamoja katika roho. Mikumbuke katika maombi. Mupendo. Unajuizo luga za kanisa. Mupendo watafadhali naomba mikumbuke katika maombi. Kuna jambo nataka tushikiane. Kuja tushikiane hapa. We will agree here and matters will be settled. So the giving details are there. Uh, 32, 59, 59. Uh, those who are giving from abroad using wave paypal 0729127362 is the account number those who are giving around uh, if you want to give your tithe offering vows there are ushers moving with envelopes eric you can stand there and also uh, you can stand there also with the open that bag so that we give our offerings are we ready now oh, someone has my phone there I'll need it to give an offering also. The only thing is that I don't tithe to myself. I tithe upward. I tithe to my spiritual father. Amen. But offering I give also. Can we pray for the offering? And we share the words of the grace? Father in the name of Jesus I thank you. Thank you because you are speaking to us concerning money. We have learned the five laws. And today we declare they are practical and activated on us. Thank you for men we are giving freely because we know all that we have. We are just custodians. Lord we know you are concerned about our righteousness not even our gift but you still need our gift for them works of ministry. Lord I thank you for men and women for their faithfulness for their love and their genuineness when it comes to the givings and I speak a blessing of everyone giving their tithes. I declare the devourer cannot attack that harvest. Their harvest is protected. You will give them rain, seed, and harvest in their times in the name of Jesus. Anyone giving their first fruit, I declare security of anything else that remains as a harvest. And anyone giving any other manner of offering, vows, free will, sacrifices, Lord, we declare as they land on the altar and as they go for the work of ministry, they are blessed. And it is in Jesus name we pray and believe. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. This month. Come and secure it in the afternoon. And tell that neighbor, don't leave as if the church is on fire. Say hi to somebody before you walk out. Amen. Well, we love you so much. Visitors, we have something for you at the visitors' parlor.